This video is an overview of the four final chapters of the quantum chemistry playlist. So picking up after the end of the diatomic molecules chapter, we have polyatomic bonding, where we discuss things like hybridization, how we take the valence orbitals of a given central atom and mix them together such that they point towards our external atoms in molecules like BEH2, borane, methane, and then including with things with lone pairs like ammonia and water. We look at things like Walsh diagrams, which show the energies of orbitals versus the uh, bond angle of the molecule, showing us how we can figure out what angle these molecules prefer to be at by showing what angle minimizes the energy of all of their electrons in each of their orbitals. Then we look at Huckel theory, which allows us to calculate the energies of particularly uh, molecules with pi systems. So we are using the linear variational method where we define our Hamiltonian matrix elements to either be alpha, where we have a single isolated uh, p orbital, beta, where they are adjacent to one another and interacting, or zero whenever they are separated by more than one carbon. Moving on then to symmetry and group theory, we show how there are things like symmetry operations, things like identity, inversion, reflection, rotation, and improper rotation, which can leave an object unchanged if it has a given uh, symmetry element associated with those things. We show how these, these operations form a point group, the point groups having labels like C infinity V, TD, D6H, C3V, or CS. And given the, po given the point group of the molecule, we can develop representations for these various operators that can act on it. Those, oper those representations are composed in their most basic form of irreducible representations, which are whose character is compiled in what are called character tables. And we can use our character tables to develop things like uh, reducible representations and tell us some interesting things about the properties of the molecules like what kind of molecular orbitals can be formed and what vibrational modes are either IR or Raman active ultimately. All right, the next chapter is on nuclear magnetic resonance. We start off by showing that uh, nuclei can have uh, nuclear magnetic spin or nuclear spin and that can create a magnetic dipole and the potential energy associated with that dipole in the presence of an external magnetic field is the negative dot product with that field. So it prefers to be aligned with the magnetic field. With our spin up and spin down states, this then results in a specific frequency at which magnetic resonance occurs, where we can transition from the low energy spin down, uh, low energy spin up to the high energy spin down state depending on a specific frequency, uh, primarily determined by the properties of the nucleus and the strength of the magnetic field. We then go into uh, some detail about some more advanced things like spin-spin coupling, which we can estimate qualitatively well uh, using first order perturbation theory if the coupling is sm much smaller than the separation between the two peaks or having to use uh, second order methods like the linear variational method when they're far, uh, far and uh, too close to one another. And then looking at things like the n plus one rule and why we have shapes like singlets, doublets, triplets, quartets, etc. And finally, we have the particle in a ring model system, which is similar to the particle in a box except for a few uh, slight changes. So our particle is a zero potential energy inside the ring where R equals capital R, and theta, the polar angle, equals 90 degrees, so we're in a fixed circle in the xy plane. Our wave function then can be reduced to a wave function of phi, the po spherical polar angle in the xy plane. Our energies are similar to the particle in a box energies, except for now we have h bar squared and a 2 instead of h and 8. And our quantum numbers can also be negative as well. So n equals 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. Our wave functions are normalized plane waves, e to the i n phi. And we can use this to explain things like Huckel's rule for aromaticity and anti-aromaticity, and to predict the absorption wavelengths for pi to pi star transitions in aromatic molecules. 
So that is the final four chapters of the quantum chemistry playlist. Links to all of these individual videos in the on-screen annotations and in the description below.